and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Governor Mapp hosts Department of Interior Insular Affairs officials. Wang F. Louie discuss SIA progress and new executive management team, and Rotary and Rescue Health Fair. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands 1 800 458 6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I wanted to lose weight at the same time gain muscle. It's easy. In our top story, Governor Kenneth Mapp welcomed Assistant Secretary of Interior for Insular Affairs, Esther Kiaina, and Insular Affairs Director Nicolo Pulla to Government House on Monday at the onset of a week of meetings with territorial officials. In their initial discussions, MAP touched on many subjects, including infrastructure budget assistance and educational funding to rebuild schools, according to a statement from Government House. The Insular Affairs team will travel to St. John and St. Croix this week and are scheduled to meet with newly installed Senate President Neville James, freshman delegate to Congress Stacy Plaskett, and St. Croix National Park Service Superintendent Joel Tutine, among others. The Department of Interior is responsible for coordinating federal policies with respect to the U.S. Virgin Islands and administering and overseeing U.S. federal assistance. The Office of Insular Affairs' mission is to foster economic opportunities, to promote government efficiency, and to improve the quality of life for people of the insular areas. In other news, Wang F. Louis Hospital held a press conference today at the Beanie and Marth Benjamin Cardiac Center. Among topics that was discussed were the upcoming cardiac symposium and Wang F. Louis's progress on the ongoing system improvement agreement and the hiring of the new executive team as mandated by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. As you know, GFL entered into a system improvement agreement with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, effective November 20th, 2014. The goal of the SIA is to provide GFL with an opportunity to achieve and maintain substantial compliance with the Medicare conditions of participation for hospitals. After just three months, under the Systems Improvement Agreement, I am happy to report that GFL has continued to make great strides and its work to improve the quality of care provided at the hospital and refine its oversight and governance processes. As a condition of the Systems Improvement Agreement, GFL engaged in an, an independent clinical quality consultant to review and strengthen the hospital's clinical processes and quality assurance programs. Hospital leadership and staff members are working closely with the independent clinical quality consultant to evaluate and improve key clinical areas. As part of its quality improvement efforts, the hospital has enhanced its training of clinical and technical staff on key patient safety and quality of care topics. The hospital has refreshed staff training on key hospital policies and is implementing a training plan in order to ensure continuous training programs are in place. The hospital will also evaluate staff competency on a regular basis. In order to meet its patient care demands, the hospital has successfully recruited new physicians, physician's assistants, and nursing staff to ensure the staffing levels are sufficient throughout the hospital. These additions to the clinical staff will help to reduce wait times and improve patient care. We have heard CMS 
and have embarked on a number of initiatives to demonstrate sustainable compliance with the CMS's conditions of participation. Completing these initiatives will position GFL as a leader in providing quality health care in the region. In terms of operations and finance, the hospital has hired a new chief operating officer and new chief financial officer. With these two key leadership positions now filled, the hospital will have the benefit of leaders to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the hospital as well as improve its financial management. Ken Okolo has accepted the position of Chief Operating Officer. And Mr. Tim Lessing has accepted the position of Chief Financial Officer. And you have already heard from our esteemed Emmett Hans Hansen, who has accepted the position of Chief of Strategic Management and Communications. The hospital continues to benefit from the leadership of its interim Chief Medical Officer, who has now become our Chief Medical Officer. <laughs> the pre President of the Medical Staff, Dr. Lacram, who is seeing patients right now. The Chief nurse, Nursing Officer, uh, Tita Incarnacion, who is off on a conference. Our Chief of Quality and Performance Im Improvement, one I'm very proud of, <laughs> Dr. Um, Mr. Thomas. And Corporate Compliance and Risk Management of Officer, Ms. Dima Will Williams. And of course, we have other um, key leadership uh, members who will not be mentioned at this time. Meanwhile, the University of the Virgin Islands is one of 19 land-grant universities to receive the 2014 Experiment Station Section Excellence in Multi-State Research Award. In addition to having the University of the Virgin Islands project name Scaling Micro Irrigation Technologies to address the global water challenge, added to play at the USDA Waterfront Center in Washington, D.C. The University of the Virgin Islands researchers participating in W-2128 micro-irrigation for the Sustainable Water Use Project will receive $15,000 to continue their work. The prestigious award recognizes the university's collaboration on a multi-state research project and helps to increase farmers' understanding and the use of micro-irrigation. Congratulations to UVI. Stay with us. We have more news straight ahead. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And welcome back to News Channel 8. Now here is Ashley Messiah with your weekly Crime Stoppers report. Good evening. This is Ashley Musai reporting your weekly Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers thanks you for making a difference in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Let's help make the USVI one of the safest places in the world to live, work, and raise a family. If you know something, say something. St. Croix, police still needs your help in solving this crime. On January 16th, the territory's record is first homicide for the new year. Around 5.05 p.m., police received a report of a shooting in the vicinity of 37F Estate, Wim. When police arrived, they found 29-year-old Jose Hernandez of Molly Holmes dead from multiple gunshot wounds. If you have any information on this murder, please call us. St. Thomas, on January 26, at around 6.40 p.m., officers responded to a report of a shooting in the Hidden Valley Apartments near Building 21. A black male was found unresponsive with several gunshot wounds. He was identified as 21-year-old Hezekiah Joseph. Any information could be helpful no matter how insignificant it may seem. St. John, on January 21st at approximately 10.25 p.m., police officers were dispatched to Coral Bay regarding a robbery. Upon arrival, contact was made with the two victims who stated that they had closed up the Dolphins Market convenience store and were proceeding to their vehicles with the money from the day's sale. 
As they continued walking towards the parking lot area, a black male approached them, brandishing a handgun and told them to hand over the bag, which contained an undisclosed amount of money. The male victim reluctantly cooperated and was struck by the suspect. The suspect then fired a shot into the air and ran into the neighboring bushes with the store's cash bag. The above crime should be easily and have happened to you. Please continue to work for the good of all. Tell us what you know about these or any other crimes at www.crimestoppersusvi.org or by calling 1-800-222-TIPS. That's 1-800-222-8477. You can also text USVI plus your message to crime at 27637. If your tip leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, illegal drugs, or weapon, in addition to be having made your home safer place, you will receive a cash reward to be paid according to your instruction. This is Ashley Massari reporting your weekly Crime Stoppers for News Channel 8. Meanwhile, Rotary and St. Croix Rescue are joining together for the 10th year to present their annual community health fair that will be held February 7th at the St. Croix Rescue Academy at Five Corners, beginning at 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Leon from St. Croix Rotary, and this is? Liz Goggins, I am the PIO for St. Croix Rescue. And we want to thank Channel 8 for allowing us this time to tell you about our health fair that's going to be held on Saturday, the 6th of, the 7th. 7th of February, sorry, Saturday, the 7th of February, at Rescue at Five Corners in Princess. And we're going to have glucose, cholesterol, and HIV screenings, a blood drive, and for all of those giving blood, you get a 10% Angry Nate's discount coupon from a great restaurant. Demonstration by St. Croix Rescue's Extrication Specialist, Special Tactical Team at 10 o'clock. And then we've got a wonderful presentation at 9, 11, and 1 by Dr. Alberto Cornier, MD, PhD, Puerto Rico's leading pediatrician, geneticist on autism and childhood genetic diseases. So we're inviting the general public, anyone who wants to know about autism, anyone who has an autistic child, Department of Education staff, come on out to listen to him and get whatever assistance and information you may need. All right. Um, just a little bit more on that. The 9 a.m. presentation by Dr. Cornier will be in English and at 11 a.m. it's going to be in Spanish. So he's reaching out. We are, as a, as a group, reaching out to the Hispanic community. He has many patients here that already traveled to Puerto Rico to see him. So we're really excited to have Dr. Cornier here. And then the one o'clock presentation will be a general presentation on genetic pediatric diseases. So again, we urge everybody to come out for that. Um, we also have the hyperbaric medical group coming out. Um, this is really exciting news for St. Croix. For those who are not familiar with hyperbaric medicine, you've probably heard of the chamber that divers go into when they um, have an a diving accident. The hyperbaric chambers are also used for wound care, especially for diabetic injuries and diabetic problems with feet. People who go into the chamber are either able to save a limb or if let's say for instance your leg is going to be removed from below your knee you may be able to save it and, and lose a toe or two really exciting for Singapore. we have so many people here with diabetes and with diabetic injuries to have the hyperbaric medical group here on st croix uh, we have mental health professionals we have a nutritionist um, we also, this is exciting, kind of fun, we have a mini market that will be going on, Sage of Farms will be here setting up a mini market, and we'll, they'll have um, honey and other products from local beekeepers. We have people who are doing um, soaps and lotions, all natural ingredients, they'll be here too. And then for our extrication, um, which Sandra already mentioned at 10 a.m., we have a special guest who will be the victim in the car that the aspect uh, unit will be extricating. 
and that's where she would claim it. So he'll be joining us, he'll be in the car um, broadcasting live on Vivid Streaming. So that, that will be um, an interesting extrication demonstration. Okay. Again, it is Saturday, this Saturday, February 7th. We begin at 7 a.m. because we know people like to come early and have their glucose testing, cholesterol. So we'll be starting at 7 and we'll be here till about 2 p.m. Just um, a little bit more on that. Both Dr. Cornier and the Hyperbaric Medical Group will be on hand. So if you miss his presentations, he will be here. So you'll be able to talk to him more than one. So we're hoping that you're going to come out on Saturday and support Rotary and support yourself getting information and testing. See you on Saturday from 7 to 2. St. Croix Rotary. Thanks. And, also, and rescue. And rescue. And you will be able to sign up for CPR classes while you're here. So take advantage of that also. Stay tuned. We have more news coming up next. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And finally tonight, here is Stephen Ku Francis with your sports for 1 1 update. Thanks a lot, Junior. We start off your 4 1 update with the two remaining undefeated teams in the St. Croix Boys Varsity Basketball League. As we had the 3 0 Central High Caribs taking on the 4 0 Country Day Good Hope Panthers. Well, the Caribs dominated this one from start to finish as they won easy 73 to 50 leading the way for the Caribs were Leonardo Castillo he had 12 points DeAndre Hardy he also had 12 points for the Panthers Jordan Lake led all players with 14 points after the game I spoke to head coach Keith Zoro Swanson about the victory and also about the upcoming tournament on February 13th we came with a, with a game plan today about um, getting the game out of hand from the goal you know what I mean? So we just wanted to turn up the defense and execute as well as we could. Um, talk about um, the seniors, man. You got some seniors, you got a deep team, and they get the starting five look really impressive. So. Yeah, um, our seniors, um, they, they, they're good. We got like um, Pino, um, Rakim Richardson is one, Leonardo is two, um, Karaichi, and um, we have Yellow, and then we have Shaka. I know that's our seniors and Dio, we got, um, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six seniors we got on our team. You know what I mean? And um, that man do good. And five, I think it's about four, four out of that five is starters on this team. Um, they definitely, uh, the senior leadership going to definitely, definitely play a role in the upcoming season, the rest of the season. Yeah, and for our tournament, our tournament is, is uh, from the 13th to the 15th. You know what I mean? So we're preparing ourselves for that tournament. So um, we should win that tournament. Um, if everything go well, everybody stay healthy, and we should win that tournament. Now to the pros, where the Atlanta Hawks have won 19 in a row, the fifth longest streak in NBA history. They were visiting the Pelicans in New Orleans. Anthony Davis, like truffle butter on a roll. Davis back his first game since missing a game with a grown injury. He had 19 points and seven rebounds in the first half. Damari Cowell trying his best to keep the Hawks in it, but not a great shooting night. Eric Gordon, he had 20 points, six Pelicans in double figures. The streak is over. New Orleans take it 115 to 100. So Atlanta lost. If Cleveland wins, they're going to have the active longest streak at 11. And they were playing the 76ers. Mm, I'm just saying I like their chances. Kevin Love serves up a nice dish to LeBron James. He know what to do with it. Make it nasty. Remember the 76ers beat Cleveland in January and he was like, oh no. But LeBron, he didn't play. Kyrie Irving, he did not play. Just call Irving the bus driver as he takes the 76ers to school. Cavs win 97-84. That's 11 straight. To the NFL, Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Manziel has checked himself into rehab. Johnny Football has a history of hard partying and trouble with alcohol. The 22-year-old was the first freshman ever to win the Heisman Trophy 
but he was drafted 22nd last year partially because his work ethic and his off the field antics. His rookie season with the Browns was not spectacular. That's a look at Sports 411 update. I'm Steve Cook Francis. Sean Lee, back to you, Junior. Thank you, Goof. Stay with us. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather coming up next. Your weather. And now here's a look at your five day weather forecast. Tonight, isolated showers, mostly clear with a low around 72. Southeast wind 11 to 14 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. On Wednesday, scattered showers, mainly afternoon, mostly sunny with a high near 85. East northeast wind 14 to 16 miles per hour coming southeast in the afternoon. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. Wednesday night, scattered showers, partly cloudy with the low around 71. Northeast wind 9 to 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. On Thursday, scattered showers, mostly sunny with a high near 85. East wind around 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. New precipitation amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible. And on Thursday night, isolated showers, partly cloudy with a low around 71. Northeast wind around 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. This is Cheryl Francis with your Channel 8 News Weather. Well, that's a look at what's happening here in our territory on the behalf of WSVI TV News Channel 8. I'd like to say thank you for tuning in. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. News Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands 1 800 458 6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I wanted to lose weight at the same time gain muscle. It's easy.